Fire and Municipal Building Improvement Bond would impact the Trenton Police Department. Um, I'd like to thank Chief Hawkins for putting this presentation together, um, and I'll just turn it immediately over to you, sir. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank you and the City Council and the City Administration for having me here tonight to talk about the Police Department buildings and how the Fire, Police, and Municipal Improvement Building Improvement Bond would affect the Police Department. I just want to take a second to thank the men and women of the Trenton Police Department for their continued hard work and dedication our city. The following slides are going to give you a quick overview of our structural and operational deficiencies due to our 97-year-old building where I believe the new police station can have a positive impact on officers and residents. So the purpose today is to review the current status of the police department facility, identify deficiencies discussed in the building assessment previously presented to council by the collaborative, and provide a guide as to what is needed for our future. So we're going to have uh, provide council and all viewers with a visual representation of our current structure, provide council with information on current needs and trends of a police facility, and provide council and viewers with potential photos and renderings of needed spaces. And I want to make clear, any photos in the future needs section are just a visual representation for you to get an understanding and, and nothing that's been decided on. So let's get started and talk about the assessment completed on our police station. So what have we done to prepare for this? It's been months of meetings and research to gather data and information on various builds and trends in police station design. I've attended a station design conference and had one-on-one -on -one meetings with architects regarding cost per square footage and uh, discussion on new construction and trends of the police station design. I've spoken with Windup Police Department regarding their station, which 32,000 square feet is police related. We've met with Redstone Architects, AEW Architects, and done walkthroughs of the building. Spoke with the collaborative team who did the building assessment and talked about ideas on whether new versus renovation would even be uh, worth talking about. Also spoke to St. Clair Shores and Green Oaks Township who built new police stations. So this project can only be completed with the input of our officers and the help of our people. And some here are, are here today. And our needs assessment was done with a department leadership team that consisted of eight men and women from three to 23 years of service. And you can see who was part of that group. So our history begins in 1927. If you read my recent article in the Trenton Times, I included the uh, original article that was posted from October issue of 1927 from the newspaper, talking about the dedication of the municipal building. We originally housed the city hall, the court, police station, jail, and the Trent Library, which was in the basement of our facility. So the building has served as well over time, 97 years, but was never truly intended to be a police station. It is not set up in a way that is conducive to efficient operations. Full service jail was added in 1977. It encompasses 6,500 square feet added on to the municipal building. We offer a full service jail that can house 16 full term and five short term prisoners. That full service jail was closed in 2002 and much of that square footage is unutilized space and has been for 22 years. And if you read the article on the collaborative, much of that space is in a state of disrepair. Uh, we used to house prisoners from the Down River Eight, uh, from all Down River agencies for up to 90 days. I thought this was an important slide to take a peek at here. The average age without the city of Trenton Police Department is 37 years old of a police building which makes our current facility 60 years older than the average police station around. I won't go through the names, but you can see them there. We'll talk about current deficiencies. I'll run through them here, and then we're gonna get into some more in depth. So current deficiencies, we have no women's locker room or changing area, no men's locker room, changing area, no training room, no training area or classroom. Our equipment storage is inadequate. Currently non-ADA compliant, our elevator is inoperable and stairs are needed to gain access to the lobby. We have no conference room or area for meetings, emergency operations center. No workout or exercise facility, break room, lunch room, report writing room, and on multiple occasions we've had raw sewage coming up from the basement into our facility. We have unsecure and outdated evidence rooms, no secure interview room in the jail facility. And our jail operations have minimized. It's not efficient to house extended state prisoners. We have no temperature control. Our roofs are leaking and often collecting in buckets on the floor. And we have an outdated jail and station monitoring and access control system. 
But we're now we're going to get into a few of these slides more in depth. And I apologize for the pictures, but that is what we live with here. Okay. Just last week, um, we were able to hire our fourth female to add to the force after she attends the police academy in July. And I give credit to these female officers, and one is here today uh, who was on the building assessment committee, who deserves separate and equal spaces. The lack of female facilities has been troubling and has had a major impact on recruiting. Um, while I say that, men don't have quality, quality facilities either. As we see, they don't have a locker room, but on the right side of this, this uh, display is just a bathroom and one shower stall that barely has any pressure. On the left side, you can see raw sewage has come up through the drain several times in the basement and goes into the bathroom area where some of the officers change. And that's happened multiple times. Lockers don't hold the equipment needed for our officers today. Uh, times have changed and, and it's required more and more equipment. These lockers won't even hold a hanger. They can't fill a bullet, fit a bulletproof vest or a duty bag. Uh, this one toilet on the right side here are the only private facilities for patrol that are not open to the public. And they've had severe plumbing issues that made these inoperable various times through the year where officers are sharing a common bathroom upstairs with the general public. This room here is what we call our squad room. So we have a lack of training and community reuse room. Uh, this squad room is the only room available to officers. Uh, narcotics and evidence are handled in the same seat where officers <coughs> eat lunch, write reports. Juveniles are also held here, so there is no secure area for them. So this, this space here functions as everything in the police department. Storage is very limited dispersed in several rooms throughout the station, even off-site. We have a major problem with exposed wiring and storage. Um, you can see the, the picture on the left. There's times where I've had to go down and reset the phones, and I've got to pick one of those wires there. I'm not quite sure, but uh, we, we usually get it working here. But uh, you can see on the right side the ceiling, and if you look closely, you can see the water damage um, on the counter and on the boxes. We've had records and uh, documents that have been damaged over the years ceilings. Body cameras, tasers, drones, and other electronic equipment is piled into the squad room on the left side there. Uh, there's no place in the station for dedicated storage. Wiring for internet and electrical is not sufficient. And you can see on the right side extension cords that are routinely run through the station for electronics and heaters, especially in the winter due to lack of basic work heating. We talk about uh, not being ADA compliant. On the left side of the, the photo there, you can see the wheelchair ramp that gets you to the uh, only, I guess, accessible portion of the station. And on the right side, uh, the elevator, that's the basement. You can see the wall peeling. And in the bottom of the basement elevator shaft, at times there's been over a foot of water and hydraulic fluid uh, sitting in the basement. That elevator has been inoperable for approximately a year. There are no parts. We actually had an officer that was stuck halfway in the uh, elevator. He's here today. We rescued him without calling the fire department, but uh, we can't use that. It's been about a year. Numerous times we've had to help elderly people up just to the main lobby. We don't have a zero barrier. Uh, we have three steps just to get up to the lobby, and you can see uh, we're a basement, a main floor, and an upper floor. So it's very difficult uh, for ADA access. We have no conference room or emergency operations center really designated. So this is our overcrowded detective bureau on the left side, which is using a folding table to meet and discuss cases with evidence on there. And on our right side, you can see a wooden table in the basement of the building that Paul Haley regularly uses with that phone there. Um, it's been used for emergency operations, but really does not have the technology available. Oftentimes, there's water and leaves coming in from the doors. This is in the basement. Um, there's no place in our station to have conference rooms, or sensitive personal meetings, uh, or interviews with strategic planning. So a lack of workout or fitness area. This room was probably thriving back in, in the 1970s and 80s. It was a big draw for officers, its ability to work out and exercise. Not on duty, but, but off duty. Helps uh, officer wellness and mental health. This area in the basement has had raw sewage in it as well. Uh, equipment does not work, cables are broken, ceiling tiles, as you may be able to see in there, are, are missing or too low. You can't raise the equipment over your head. Anything that's left there is, is approximately 50 years old. Big problem we have, evidence rooms. Uh, 
Um, we have four evidence rooms at the station, which are minimally secured and have fallen apart. The photo on the left faintly shows the water damage that comes in from under the door into the property room. We don't have a, a, a property room large enough to handle evidence of property or even test narcotics. So you can see in these pictures, more property rooms. Uh, ceilings are falling out where there are no ceilings. These rooms are not secure. There's exposed wiring running through there. The accreditation process that we are attempting to go through requires so much more out of evidence, storage, security, and chain of custody for best practices. Jail operations. Uh, the facility we have no longer meets the needs of the department. And we cannot operate a full service jail. We have uh, a lot of extra space that is not being utilized and is falling apart. So we currently have areas right now that are not even monitored or recorded. Uh, in 2023, 347 people were processed, were arrested and processed and on the video or picture on the left at that computer. So it tells us there's a definite need for a holding facility, but it's not what we currently have. So jail operations are all about security. Station security is compromised any time a prisoner is walked through unsecure areas into our second floor interview room, which you can see on the right side. Prisoners are walked past officers, civilian employees, two exits, and property before arriving in that interview room. And much like fire departments have a red, yellow, green zone station design, police stations have secure areas for officers, limited security for civilians, and extreme lockdown for prisoners. And this process that we currently have has been violating that premise since 1977 the jail was open. You can see on the left picture the ceiling leaking. That's our video arraignment room. Um, since Zoom came, um, we've been doing a lot of video arraignment. And so we need a, a secure room with technology. And we've made that room work. And there's times also that use their cell phones just to zoom in because we don't have the technology or capability in there. Talk about some structural problems here. And as you can see, the photo on the left has severe cracking in the masonry wall, and that wall leads into the jail facility. The photo on the right shows the water damage and leaking of one of the janitorial closets. One of the four, they all look the same, and we picked this one. But the water damage over the years has likely led to mold issues uh, behind the walls. <coughs> Drainage problems have gotten considerably worse over the years, and, and water comes through the ceiling on heavy to moderate rainstorms. Picture on the right uh, with the arrows shows an image facing north of the masonry cracks. And the front of the building, which you can see if you look closely, is step cracking in the brick on the right side. It looks like it's ready to pull away from the building into West Jefferson. Left photo shows water damage again, occurred in a secure property room. Photo on the right is actually attic space between the police and fire station. It's amazing when looking through this building, seeing some of the old artifacts and, and relics. And one portion of that attic had a base of a chandelier that was originally over the courthouse when we housed the court. Uh, and it shows that this building was never intended to fully be a police station. Both photos in this area are facing south. The stairwell on the left photo has water that runs down the wall, causing puddles in the stairway landing. You can see the wall splitting and pulling apart really closely. Uh, that's occurring all over the station. We've done our best over the last year to cover and hide most of that to the casual observer with a thin piece of drywall. But behind, we know there are big problems. Picture on the right is an entrance ramp from our decaying handicap ramp. And on the bottom of both sides of the door, you can see the water damage is eaten away at the drywall. Foundation is moved. It's hard to open and close that door. And oftentimes, we'll have snow and water that blows in underneath. Parking's a problem downtown. Always has been, but unsecure parking at our police station has caused some issues. Over the year, we've had many encounters with people walking into the back lot, suspicious people, and it's around patrol cars and specialized equipment. And during special events, we have uh, parking in emergency lanes, and, and also there's no clear area for residents to park. So how will the, the fire police municipal building improve upon? How would it impact the Trent Police Department? Well, when we talk about new facility guidelines, we can look to the International Associated Chiefs of Police. And a building has to fit the agency's operational and cultural needs. And I think that's very important, operational and cultural needs. <coughs> and the useful life of a, a new police facility should last at least 50 years. And of course, we're well past that. And the next bullet is, is most facilities continue to operate well past that lifespan. And we're 47 years past that lifespan. 
And of course, it's because there's been the major changes in technology, building code requirements, security issues, HVAC, and electrical. So we have to ask ourselves some questions. How would a new facility align with our department's overall strategic plan and service goals? What does our department need to make community-oriented policing work better with the community? And our operational standards or best practices of the department compromise through the use of our current facility. So number one and two, the first two bullets we're going to get into extensively, but, but number three, our, our best practices compromise, of course, is the answer. So back in 1927, there were no police standards. Police were learning as they went. Stations were built as fortresses or castles. There was no technology, no property, no transparency. So hopefully in these next few slides, we can show how we can accomplish operational standards and best practices with a new police facility. So when we look back, operational goals, what, first off, what are our goals? What's our mission? So I'll, I'll read it real quick to you, and I know you can see it's the mission of the Trent Police Department to enhance and improve the quality of life in Trent by working with our citizens and community partners to reduce crime, the fear of crime, preserve life, protect people, enforce the law, maintain order, keep the peace. And that, that uh, has been in effect, that mission statement for a while, but we had to come up with our service goals. We had to identify them over the last year to make this important. So number one is, is community engagement. The, another one is to have highly trained officers. And third is provide a service second to none. So a little deeper, created on December 18th, 2014, then President Obama uh, created the 21st Century and Policing Task Force who was charged with identifying best practices and offering recommendations on how policing practices can promote effective crime reduction while building public trust. And these recommended pillars of best practice have become the standard of policing and it withstood drastic political tension over the years. Every police training, policy, decision, and facility design takes into account the pillars identified by the task force, which are building trust and legitimacy, policy and oversight, technology, social media, community policing and crime reduction, training and education, officer wellness and safety. So our question is, how can we combine our service goals that we listed there and the six pillars to create the best station for our community and our officers? Well, it's to create a new Trent Police Station based on the following goals and visions. Number one, the need to support community engagement, fostering resident involvement and in welcoming atmosphere. Two is to create modern spaces to have highly skilled and trained officers. Three is to utilize the latest in technology to enhance service and protection within our neighborhoods. And four, to support officer wellness and mental health. And I think if we can do this, we'll have a station that the community and the officers will be proud to call home. So, what do we need? The following slides are going to give you a visual representation. And again, a reminder, these photos are to give you a general idea of the space and are not intended to depict actual, actual spaces. We actually give you a, a few to choose which one you like. So locker rooms. New locker room with lockers that can house all the officers' equipment and separate shower and changing areas for male and females. Today's lockers are much bigger. Uh, there's storage underneath. As you can see, the weight many different variations. Uh, may include power or drying racks for vests, but we need something uh, better than what we have. And here's a few examples right now. Um, there's a floor plan, there's showers. The showers nowadays are not a communal shower like you see, they're individual stalls. There, there's a lot of ideas. Now the new trend is for general neutral, gender neutral locker rooms and individual shower and changing areas. I'm still a little old school and I prefer separate areas for showers and, and men's and women's locker rooms, but we're going to look at everything. Um, our, our females did not have or don't have in our station, and, um, and you can ask one of the members that was on our committee, uh, on our committee any area to change, uh, any area for nursing. Um, there's a lot of things that we don't have that uh, we can identify when we create these locker rooms. So a training room or community use room. So our need is for a full training room that can be utilized by officers as well as the community. We'll be able to host training and host community events in, in, uh, in this area. We had an increase in training of 58% in the last year, which is over 4,000 hours of off-site training for officers that we want to bring back to the department. Again, many different variations. Seating to hold at least 35 would allow us to host our entire department, and anything over 30, we can host state training. 
community groups, neighborhood watch, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts would all be able to utilize this safe space to hold meetings and further engage with the department and the officers. Wiring and storage, pretty simple. Um, looks a lot cleaner than what we had in the basement on our earlier slides. Uh, but wiring with internet capability throughout the building and storage areas for police equipment. Stores for duty bags, weapons, tasers, drones, body cams are all needed and they need dedicated spaces. And none of these were items back in 1927. ADA compliance, a, a new entry and lobby with no barriers. Uh, ADA compliant access and a footprint large enough for a single level service if, if we could do that. Adding second floor would be out of necessity. The stairwells and the elevator mechanical units add wasted square footage. The goal is to have a single story with an inviting lobby and any barriers would be built outside of the design. So emergency operations center, conference rooms containing up-to-date technology and equipment. The emergency operations center or EOC should be a standalone room that doubles as a real-time crime center that can loop in video feeds from across the city in one room. With this space, we'd be able to readily handle any emergency and city event plus monitor live feeds and video to enhance safety. And conference rooms, of course, are a necessity for meetings and sensitive discussions. <coughs> evidence rooms. As mentioned earlier, we have four small, minimally secured evidence rooms. We need one space to test, bag, label evidence before it's stored. And the storage times differ, so it can be months to permanent. But our need is to have one secure room that meets the size and standards for a police agency. Best practice for chain of custody allows only a minimal number of officers to handle and have access to evidence. The standard, which you see here, is pass-through lockers. Uh, they're retrieved and placed into storage by the property officer on the opposite side. This is an accreditation standard that we are going to have to adopt. So our statistics show us that a holding facility is needed, and we talked about that earlier. 347 people were booked, but in 2023 we housed 260 people. The difference is and we housed them for 456 days. Many were booked and released uh, based on new laws, but we did house 260 inmates for 456 days. So a smaller jail or holding facility is needed. Uh, Trent is now a pre-arraignment facility. Post-arraignment, prisoners are sent to Wayne County. So we, we've reduced the maximum 20-bed facility we have now with a five to six short-term stay. And again, noted earlier about our current interview room, the old jail facilities needed with secure part of the interview rooms inside, and uh, the reduced jail building would be a complete audio and video system as well. So workout fitness area. Some people may think this is, is a luxury. This is actually something in all police stations, fire stations, and in many businesses. Um, it, it's very common for training in mental health and wellness. And attached a picture of a mat room as, as well. So mats uh, required for defensive tactics training that we have to do annually. Not only do these spaces keep our officers physically fit, train on the latest tactics, but they're a stress reliever, a stress reliever and they promote positive mental health and well-being. And mental health and, and wellness is one of the six pillars that's receiving the most attention lately due to the unfortunate rates of suicide among law enforcement officers. So we talk about secure parking, and a new station design should include some gated parking areas for officers and patrol cars, and also carports, but clearly defined in designated public areas as well. And the last bullet point, we talk about infrastructure for EV or electric vehicles, and solar panels on carports. So I, I want to show you the next slide. So we have, on the right side, we just have carports there. Um, but on the left, we've got carports, and what we talked about the future we need to build this station to last 50 years and we have to look forward. So we look at solar ability, um, so the infrastructure has to be there. Studies show that electric vehicles are on the horizon, um, even more so than now. And I don't believe enough studies have been done on patrol vehicles, but we need to have this infrastructure in place. And uh, the question mark on there, I, I don't want people to think, wow, we're putting panels on now. Panels can be done later, right. but it, it's the uh, infrastructure that's needed. That's our neighbors to the west. That's Brownstown PD with all those solar panels on their carport. So it isn't far off, it's right next door. So I can give examples of buildings from, from different extremes. Um, I love the old style look of our station, and, and we want to make sure that architects design it with a location location line. But a modern police station has to be inviting, it has to be accessible, and it has to be able to handle the needs of the department in the community for the next 50 plus years. 
So again, I appreciate everyone's time sitting here listening to me go on and on about our current problems at the station and what it could look like in the future. Uh, I'm always open for questions, and if anyone would like to see the station, we are going to be having tours uh, as well as during the street fair, and those will be posted. So I appreciate your time. I know it's been a long day, but if you have any questions, feel free. Thank you very much, Chief. I really appreciate everything, and I think uh, I, I feel very comfortable speaking for all of Council um, and saying that you know we appreciate all the work that your entire department has put into this so far. Um, you guys know what you need a lot better than we do, um, and so we need all the information we can get. So, does anyone have any, I don't know from Council have any questions, comments, uh, thoughts here first, Councilwoman I, Rodriguez? I really enjoyed this. This was extremely thorough and it was everything that I, I had been looking for and hoping that you all would present this and very well done. Very well done and you and your team did a wonderful job. Well, I appreciate it, but it was a lot of the help of, of those people over there. And, and our, our, when we make decisions like this, these decisions are going to far outlast me. So we had always right. had three years on that are going to, if, if this happens, see this out. So we're trying to take input from, from everybody and um, I, I appreciate their, their help yeah. as well. Thank you very much. It was very good. Yes, Chief, uh, when, when you discussed uh, safety, for everything, for the employees, general public, um, but also the safety of the uh, electronic data is important. I don't think you, you kind of touched on it, but I really think the security of that is very, very important. <clears throat> the way you guys are set up now, you, you're putting yourself out there to kind of be uh, hacked, so to speak, and I just think that's important, and I think it's a great job that you trust it. So I just want to say thank you for thinking of that. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. And, and I, I give credit to you know, previous administrations and the police department. They, they've tried to, to live forward what we can, but any, any new build would, would definitely take that into account, in, uh, not only with uh, electronic data, but all of uh, storage. Anyone else from council have questions? Sure, Alan, you got one? Yeah. Um, I've been through three generations of changing standards for sentencing and jail time, including watching it here 50 years ago. And is there, do you have it set up so you can expand your your holding cell? And yeah, you can plan the designs because I can see the court changing as, you know, move downtown to after a rainman was a little flip in Boyd County. Do we have a so the the question would be do we have a potential to expand right now we really don't the way it's set up uh, when we set anything up we want to set things for the future and i don't think it's right to ask taxpayers to fund space for other departments prisoners so right now we're, we would be looking at ours and it would incorporate a whole different bill that we can monitor these people securely and safely but Everything we do would be looking out of, of where can we be in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, and all of that would, would go into account, especially when we build this jail facility. Thank you. Anyone else got anything? Could open to the public? Sure. Okay. Uh, you got to manage both. If I gavel you down, you know. Pardon me? <laughs> if I gavel you down, you know. Just the, uh, and I know some of this is way from but location, is it dependent upon, is the police more dependent upon a central location than say fire? And, and is it uh, administration's idea to keep the uh, fire and police uh, combined? Or well, if you're asking a question of the administration, I'm not gonna speak for them, but, but I will tell you that, that this, um, this proposal obviously <laughs> Uh, a centralized location for everybody in the city would be ideal. And, and a central location would be somewhere in the, the Four Street West Road area. Um, you know, our officers are fortunate that we respond from our vehicles uh, the majority of the time. So I think you're going to hear in, in two weeks how important that is to the fire department. Um, and as we work through this, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what the options are uh, in work through the city. Yeah. 
Did he answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> I can answer it for you. Uh, I don't know if public or anything. Amy, is that, is that a no, question? I <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, you got let off easy, right, Chief? But uh, I do want to just, again, say thank you very much to you and the entire department for all the work on this. Um, it's been a, a long slog and something you guys have needed and deserved for decades now, and we just hope that we can make that happen. So uh, for folks watching at home, do want to make sure, uh, just again as a reminder, our next council meeting, uh, two weeks from tonight, <coughs> and the ensuing study session will be at the fire station downtown. Um, where Chief Anderson will also be presenting um, what this means from the fire department perspective too. Um, but as Chief Hawkins said too, we'll be doing tours uh, as needed and then throughout the street fair um, so folks have an opportunity to see as much of the nitty gritty as we can show um, for why this is so important to the department for long after we're all gone here. So uh, if you have anything else to close out Chief or anything like that. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess we'll actually get a call for public comments. It's a public meeting. Anyone wishing to speak, please limit your comments to five minutes. Begin with your name and address. Direct all questions through me. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn at 9.37 so p.m. Moved. moved and supported. And council, don't go anywhere because we have a closed session after along with uh, Elizabeth, Kevin. Uh, we're going to go in the room down the hall. Definitely.